So last Christmas, I put together what wound up being one of my favorite projects that I've ever done. Uh, it was a set of playable Duck Hunt Christmas ornaments that you can hang on your tree, and you can actually play them using an NES zapper gun. Okay, so it's not actual Duck Hunt, but it's pretty cool, and it was just a really fun project to put together. Anyway, I told you guys that I would go back and do a full how-to guide, share with you all the code and the models, show you how to put one together yourself. I never wound up doing that, uh, and I can't believe it's already been a year at this point, but better late than never, right? Okay, now before I get started, a huge disclaimer. Uh, in the version that I did for myself, I went and found assets like the images and sound effects, music and things like that uh, to use in my build to make it more authentic, to make it actual Duck Hunt. Obviously, Duck Hunt is owned by Nintendo and I don't want to get in trouble by sharing any of that stuff. So I've replaced all of those assets with more generic versions. Um, so if you want to replace those with the legit versions, you'll have to go and Google that and find them on your own. Uh, I just don't want to be the one that's actually sharing them and risk getting in trouble for that. Also, something that I wanted to point out, an option that you have for making the actual ducks that hang on the tree, uh, you can use perler beads, those little melty beads that you played with when you were a kid. Who am I kidding? I still play with them sometimes. A lot of people don't have 3D printers, and on top of that, a lot of those people don't have the ability to print in multiple colors at once. Anyway, so if you want to make multicolored ducks and you want to make kind of the more legit duck hunt versions of them, that's a really good option. All right, so with that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so here are the parts that I used to make it, and as usual, there will be a blog post in the description with all the links to everything that you need. I've got a Feather M4 Express. This has become really my go-to board for projects like this because it's nice and fast, has built-in battery charging, tons of input and output, just a great all-around board and super easy to set up and get going with. This blue board here is an audio FX soundboard from Adafruit. It's awesome for projects like this because you can just plug it into your computer, drop some audio files on it, and trigger them either through buttons or sensors or whatever connected to these trigger pins, or you can send commands directly to it in code using the UART interface, which is what we'll be doing from the M4 Express. Got a cheap audio amplifier. You can get these on Amazon or eBay for a few bucks. Speaker to go along with it a power switch that will hook up to the enable pin on the feather board, and a 2.4 inch SPI based screen. These are super cheap and easy to use, again they're a few bucks on AliExpress or eBay. And powering all that I've got a 1200 milliamp hour battery. You can use pretty much any 3.7 volt lithium polymer battery, uh, just make sure that the polarity on the connector is the same. Then finally I've got a 3D printed case to hold all of those parts. I modeled it to look like a retro television set and it's got mounting points for everything on the inside. STL files are in the blog post and if you don't have a printer there are a ton of services online to get models printed for you. Now inside each of the ducks is an infrared receiver, an LED to let you know which duck is currently active, and then a transistor which we'll use to switch on and off the receiver and LED in each duck depending on whether or not it's the one that they're currently supposed to be shooting at, and a resistor for the LED. All of that obviously goes inside of a printed duck. Again, models are in the blog post. All right, so I'll start with the base station, and I'm gonna do this a little different than usual. I'll show you at a high level which parts are connected and what they do, uh, but for the actual specifics of which wire goes to which pin and all that stuff, check out the blog post for the wiring diagrams, which will probably be easier to follow than a video would be anyway. Now I know this looks like a huge mess, uh, but again, check out the wiring diagrams. It's actually not that bad. Uh, there's just a lot of wires. So the soundboard is connected to the feather board using the UART interface to trigger different sounds directly from the Python code. The output from the soundboard goes to the amplifier, which outputs to the speaker. Both the soundboard and the amplifier are powered off of this power strip I made out of some prototyping board. It makes it so that I can power all of the ducks and everything off of the feather board, and this middle set of blue wires are the signal pins from all the ducks infrared receivers. So this goes to an input pin on the feather. Then the screen is wired up to the SPI pins on the feather, and the power switch goes to the enable pin. Now inside each duck is a transistor which controls the ground connection that goes to the LED and the infrared receiver. So when the board sends a signal to the transistor, it flips on that LED and the infrared receiver becomes active as well. Now for the zapper, I actually ended up taking one of the ones from when I did the lamp zapper project a while back and I swapped out the board in there for the Trinket M0 and moved the LED up to the front of the barrel. I'll link to that lamp zapper video below as well, by the way. These exposed pieces of metal up here go to a switch that the trigger actuates. 
So those are connected to input pins on the board. Uh, then down here on the handle is the battery charging board, power switch, and battery. Again, a wiring diagram that will make all these connections clear is in the blog post. All right, so now let's look at the code. And I'm not gonna go through it line by line or anything, but I'll give you a general overview of how it works. So for the base station code, there's a library folder that has all the libraries that we'll be using. Uh, there's an images folder that has the images that will be displayed on the screen. And then the main.py file is where the actual code is. So up here at the top, we declare a bunch of global variables, and then we've got a bunch of setup and utility functions. Uh, the interesting stuff is down here at the bottom, and it's actually pretty short. So here's the loop that the board goes through over and over and over again once it turns on. The first thing that we do at the top of the loop every time is check the infrared input to see if we received anything. That's this function up here. So if we did receive something, then we check to see if it's the code that we were looking for. And if it was, then we check and see if the game is running. And if it is, then that means that they hit the currently active duck. Because remember, only one of those infrared receivers is active at any given time. So if we received that code, that means that they aimed at and hit the currently active duck. If a game is not running, then that means that we should start a new game. That means that they hit the blue duck that automatically becomes active when you turn it on. So after we do that, then we check to see if the game is running. If it is, then we draw the game with the current score. Then we call the update ducks function and what this does is it checks the timers to see if too much time has passed before hitting a duck, meaning that the game should be over, they missed one. And then after that we check to see if the game is over, and if it is then we draw the game over screen with your final score. So pretty simple. There's a lot of code up here that's just for setting up and utility type stuff like drawing strings and playing different sounds and things like that. Uh, but really the most interesting part, like I say, is down here at the bottom. So I'll leave it at that for the base station code. Uh, feel free to dig through it if you want. A uh, big disclaimer, I actually don't use Python that often, uh, so I'm sure that there's better ways to do some of this stuff, uh, but it works. So then there's the zapper code. Uh, again, we've got a library folder here with a couple of libraries that we're using. And then the main.py file has the actual code in it. It's pretty simple, just some setup stuff here at the top. And then down here at the bottom, we check to see if the trigger was pulled. And if it was, we send that code that we're looking for in the base station, which is just the number 42. And that's it. Okay, I think that about covers it. Again, check out the link in the description. Uh, the blog post will have all of the parts that you need to put it together, wiring diagrams, models, all the code, all of that good stuff. And if I forgot anything or if I need to go back and correct anything, that's where I'll do it as well. If you have any questions or if you wanna show off projects that you're working on, be sure and check out our Discord server. I'll link to that in the description as well. Finally, last but definitely not least, as usual, a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. Uh, this year has been pretty tough for a lot of people. So uh, for anybody who's kicking in a few bucks, I really appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.